Welcome back to the Young Adults Real Talk Forum, a place where great minds meet to talk about real issues in today's Christian society. We open this show in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Great minds, great minds. Welcome back. I am super excited to see you again yet another Sunday. We love you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, for those who just joined us, please phone a friend and tell them we are live. Today, we have a special show for you, and you do not want to miss out. Isn't that right, Tina? It is right. It is right. Like Patty said, wherever you are, please do phone a friend, text, send our messages on IG, Facebook, wherever you are. Tell them Great Minds is live right now, right now. And today we do have a great show for you. We have great panelists that we are going to dissect. And is there any other word? Well, let's keep with that. We are going to talk about a great topic that um, is very important and things that we, I would say we kind of overlooked, but it's going to be a great show. That's what I'm going to say. So back to you, wherever you are, be ready for a great discussion with our great panelists. Back to That's you. right. That's right. It's going to be a great discussion and a great show. And I think you picked a good word. Dissect is good. We're going to be dissecting our panel today and we're going to be dissecting our topic. We're going to first with our panel, we're gonna dissect them with these icebreakers, right? Great minds, <laughs> listen. This panel I have told me behind the stage that they love icebreakers, okay? So we are gonna give it to them today. We have to get their brains moving and going to get started and ready for a fruitful conversation. And all the great minds out there, panel, just as you know, we love to know about our panelists. Like we wanna know who's coming on the show. We wanna know about your lives. We like to get all up in there. So today we're gonna get up in there just a little bit. We're not gonna get too personal, but we're gonna ask you some fun questions. Are you guys ready? I see all the smiling faces. So let me introduce our wonderful panel that's gonna help us with these icebreakers. None other coming back from last two weeks by popular demand to finish the conversation he started. Brother Solomon is in the house with us today. Let's welcome him back. Yes. Welcome back, welcome back. With that beautiful Thank smile, you. thank you so Thank much you. for coming back. We have so many questions from that you left from last week. So I've written mine down, great minds. Make sure to bring yours out when Solomon kicks in. And of course, guys, we had to bring some of our old veterans back today, okay? We have also on the show coming back again to the Great Minds house. We have our very own brother, Richmond, is in the house today. Okay, let's welcome him. Welcome, welcome, welcome yeah. home. We missed you. Thank you so much for joining us today. And of course, we cannot have it just be all the men. We have to mix it up, Justina and I, you know, our, our female power here can't just be us. So we have our very own coming to the show for the very first time. Our very own sister Nana is here to give us a nice smooth balance of the show. Beautiful face, beautiful smile. Thank you so much for joining. Thank I'm you so really much. excited. Yes, I'm super excited to have you here. And thank you so much for joining us. And guys, as you can see, this last person, I am still waiting for the plane to land, okay? He's just coming in. He had to, he had another appointment and is coming up into it now, but we have our brother Ford in the house again with us. Welcome, welcome Elder Ford to Great Minds once again. Thank you so much for coming back. Thank you so much for coming back. We are super excited. And Elder Ford, I like your smile. So I'm going to start with you with the icebreaker. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I should have frowned. <laughs> you should have. You should have. <laughs> Lucky you. So, Elder Ford, my question for you is, and today we have two questions, but each person only gets to answer one, because I see Ford almost had a panic attack when I said <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Don't worry, you just pick one. Just pick one. So mm -hmm. for if your if we were to make a movie out of your life, what genre would that be? Mm. <laughs> oh, that's a great question. Um, the, if there was to be a movie, what genre would it be? I guess it would be in drama. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Really? Why? I'm curious. Yeah. We want to know why. Why would it be a drama movie? Yeah, I feel like, you know, it would be like if my life was a movie, it would be a, like a really interesting movie. Like, you would right. you not know what to expect. You know, there's some dramatic scenes in there, maybe. So, yeah. Uh, I would watch a movie about my life. So. <laughs> we are all watching and we're waiting for that part two with that ring. <laughs> So don't worry. We're oh, all man. sitting tight. Wait for that movie to for that movie to drop. Thank you, Elder Ford. I like that drama. It will be an interesting movie to watch. Elder Richmond, I'll give you the same question. If your life was a movie, what genre would it be? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was going to be the last person to answer. You know? <laughs> yes, um, um, I guess maybe it would be science fiction. Mm, nice, yes, nice. Because growing up, I've always loved science. <laughs> nice. Okay, I like that. I like that. That is awesome. So, um, Brother Solomon, I'm going to pull you in, but I'm going to ask you a different question. So, Brother Solomon, if you were famous, what would you be famous for? Wow, that's a good question. Uh, for teaching the word? I think so. Uh, okay. So you'd be a yeah, famous, yeah, like a famous, famous apostle? Uh, a teacher. A teacher. Oh, I love it. I love it. That's you 100%. Teacher of the word. Teacher of the word. Yes, I see it. I'm telling you. I love it. Awesome. Sister Nana, Dickness Nana, what about you? If you were famous, what would you be famous for? <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing really too special about me, but I guess if I were to be famous, probably I would, I would be the one that God showed mercy. Oh, so, yeah. that is so sweet. I like that. I like that. Okay. Uh, that is a, that's a movie, girl. You should have gave me your movie. I should let me ask you that movie question too. <laughs> that is awesome. Justina, yeah. if your uh, life was a movie, uh, what genre listen, would it be? Uh, listen, let, you, you don't, you don't ask no co you don't ask no host. Listen, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> yes, I don't know. I, I have to think about it. I have to. You have to think about it in two weeks time. Absolutely. See, my mine will be um a silent film. What? That'll be so boring. It's just a lot of action, but nobody's talking. It's like you wonder what she's doing and saying. Yeah, but just you know, let's jump into it. I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> that be the boring movie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, all our panels. That was great. Drama. Hmm. Elder Four, I don't Elder Four. You got you got our great minds buzzing in on that, that drama. That, that was great. Um, so we're about to get into it. We're about to get into it. So the following conversation is not tied to any specific church, but is focus on the Christian society and community as a whole. So our topic for today is called traps, traps. And well, I'll get there in a second. So many of us desire to grow, but struggle to break free from the influences and pressure of society. If you find yourself placing your identity in, and this is what traps stand for, titles, relationships, appearance, plans or social media how do you overcome this struggle and break free how do we overcome mm. these struggles it's it's like it's a life struggle is it a life struggle or it's not does people go through that put it on their shoulder titles relationship we are going to, to talk about it dissect it like i said and we have great panelists to really help us to understand it so let's go we are is anybody excited because i'm excited for this topic and we again, are please, if you're on Facebook, YouTube, IG, do remember that Great Minds is live right now and share the link and invite other people to also join in. And Patty will say, send in your, your questions and we'll read it and ask our panelists to help us answer it. So this mm -hmm. question, let me start with Edda. Um, 
and a rich man. And I come back to pass. So, <laughs> so <laughs> why is it so much value put in acquiring titles in academics, ministry, and other arenas of our lives? Why titles and all these accolades? Why do we put so much emphasis on in our lives? And wow. I reach one, and I'll come back to Parcel. Yes, um, thank you very much, Justina. It's a very wonderful question. I think that a lot of people seek recognition, fame, and power. And that is simply because that is how, throughout the dispensations of time, society has portrayed, has made us to believe that if you want fame, recognition, and some power, you accumulate more titles. And this has even eaten into leadership, both in the church and in academia, and even in the corporate setup. Okay, but I have four leaders that I basically follow. The first one is Jesus Christ. And he never dwelt or put emphasis on titles. He was always interested in the work itself. Again, when you come to the corporate setup, there is somebody like Peter Draca, who would normally, you know, define, let's say, leadership as somebody who has followers, Warren Bennis, another major voice in leadership, says the capacity to transform vision into reality. And of course, uh, my own C or John C. Maxwell, who says leadership is influence. None of them are loose to title. Mm -hmm. So people put value on titles because we've been made to believe that it will help you get recognition, fame, and power. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pastor, oh, that's, what that's is your thought question. on that? <clears throat> oh, it's, it's, it's an amazing question. And I'm always not a big fan of titles uh, because in the body of Christ, uh, like for example, if you look at the book of Acts, even before the deacons were called, they were already doing the work. Right, so they were not. They were called deacons, not because uh, it, it was something that they were about to do. Right, they were already working in the office. So when it comes to us really paying more attention on titles, I'm not a big fan of it. That's why I like people to call me personal. Uh, but um, but again, it doesn't take away the fact that we also have to show respect to people. Uh, you know, I think the Bible says in the book of. Um, first Peter chapter two, verse 17, where Peter says, honor all people, you know, love their brotherhood, fear God and honor the king. Now he said, honor all people, but we live in a dispensation where imagine if, you know, President Biden was to come to a particular church, they would treat him special than the members. You know, mm -hmm. whenever that happens, you, you, then you can see that we have an identity problem in, in, in the body of Christ. But mm -hmm. if we honor all people, then regardless of your social status, when you come into that assembly, we are all one. You know, you know, you're, we're not going to give you a special seat because you have a better status in the, in, the, in the society, right? So I think it's something that we always have to be very careful and not let that really um, uh, drive, um, not let that really, you know, be, be like a, a, a problem in the, the body. There's one scripture that I also want to read. Um, in the book of Mark chapter 10, um, I think there was a question about, you know, um, James and John, you know, I mean, they were basically debating what, you know, who is going to be, you know, the, the chief when Jesus leaves or whatever. But if you look at verse, verse 42, I want to read verse 42 to verse 45. Um, the reason I want to read that is, you know, there was something that Jesus said that really blessed me. In verse 42, the Bible says, but Jesus called them to him and said unto them, you know that they which are um, which are accounted um, to rule over you, uh, to, to rule over the Gentiles, exercise lordship over them, and their uh, their great ones exercise authority upon them. Look at verse forty three. But so shall it not be among you. But whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. Whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be the servants of all. You know so. It talks about in the world, they have their own system, right? But as believers, we should not try to indoctrinate those systems into our our, our godly system that we have in the body. Uh, in the world, 
you know, the people that have authority, I mean, the people that are, um, have better social status, we, obviously we know that they exercise authority over people. But when it comes to the body of Christ, the one that is the greatest will be the servant of all. So in as much as you have a higher degree or whatever title in the society, if we come into that body on the gathering and that title is not manifesting in service, then it's, not, it's, it's, it's of no use. Um, so I think that's one thing that we have to be very mindful of and not let that really uh, uh, distort the order that we have in the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. That's a great answer, Solomon. But if I can ask you just a quick follow-up, because I think I think you, mm -hmm. you and Elder Richmond touched on a good point, right? But it's such a fine balance. And I'm trying to understand and um, just looking at just a question that I just got from one of our great minds watching. Um, when do you know that you're going too far and that you're that the that the church right like within the congregation that you kind of cross that line where you're idolizing the title so to speak so for an example what they're given is like what justina said with the president if we were to be at church one sunday and the president walks in are we to just say what's up and then just take a seat and just kind of keep keep going like nothing happened right or are we to show a level of respect or you know to the title right to his position and treat him a little different to make him feel comfortable and then kind of keep going. Is there a fine line where you can show respect to title and not like completely cross over into idolization where you're idolizing the, the doctors of the world and the lawyers of the world? Like, what are your thoughts? Both, both you and Richmond, um, Solomon, if that's okay. So I think there was something that Jesus said about John the Baptist that really blessed me. Um, he said, uh, the greatest in the kingdom of God, uh, you know, is 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 um, the least in the kingdom of God is actually greater than you know John the Baptist. Mm. So let's use the president as an example. There is God has His own system, right? Mm. And that system is something that we have to really respect. Paul, um, Peter said, "Honor all people, right, including the least, from the least to the greatest. We have to honor all, so, yeah. which means we have to treat everyone equal." If you yeah. look at Galatians chapter 3, I believe verse 27, uh, maybe I can read that real quick. Galatians 3 verse 26, Paul said, For we are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile. There is neither born nor free. There is neither male or female. For you are all, for you, um, there's no uh, uh, male or female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. So if a president, let's say, you know, if uh, President Biden comes in our assembly, in as much as he's the president of the nation, in that supernatural gathering, that title has no value. What do I mean? In that gathering, we are all of one in Christ. There is only one king in that gathering, which is our Lord Jesus Christ. We, are, we, we treat or we honor all people. We don't treat anyone special above another person, right? Mm -hmm. Whether you are a Jew or a Gentile, whether you are white or black, if you come into that gathering, I always tell people it is only the body of Christ that we can actually unite people where we are all equal. Yes. You know, the world is fighting for, you know, equality. But in the system of this world, equality can never work. It can only work in the body of Christ, right? Where we are all put on the same level, where we are all treated equally. Not that, oh, because you have this social status, because you are, you are the president, uh, when you come in, we should all stand up and, and, and revere you, right? What about the Sunday school teacher? What about mm -hmm. the elder? You know, what about someone who is actually serving in the body? You know, so we have to be very careful not to play into that social or the, the worldly mindset of, because when you do that, you, you, you basically upholding the worldly title above what we have in the in the supernatural uh, gathering. You know, I don't know if I'm making any sense here. Yeah, definitely. Ella Richmond, you have something to add to that thought as well? That was good, Solomon. Thank you. Yes. Um, uh, thank you very much for the question. I, I think we have to understand that um, in as much as we are Christians, we are not necessarily living in a theological system. There are systems here in this world that are not evil. Although I admit that sometimes the way the world does things sometimes crosses the line, as you said. 
Mm-hmm. But according and giving Anna to whom Anna is due, uh, it's not a problem unless there is an abuse. Mm. People have gone into the higher echelons, entered into the corridors of power, and they don't lord it on people. Now, the reason why positions and all that are very important is that the church has even become bigger. Sometimes I ask myself, if Jesus was really in our days, (laughs) as the head of the church, how was he going to handle stuff? Once the church begins to expand, once corporate levels begin to expand, then there's a need for some, you know, leadership and people to look at things. And for me, so far as there is no abuse, it only becomes a problem when there is an abuse or when there is a temptation to cross the line. Mm -hmm. But if there is no abuse, then the cleaner is important as the manager. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that the levels of operation are the same. He has to go in and do his work as a cleaner and God bless him or her. The CEO must also go and do his work as a CEO. And so far as we all understand ourselves based on our level, we don't have a problem. But you see, the world sometimes will push people to use the power, influence and fame and recognition to lot over people. That is where I have a problem. But if again in the church, when we come to church, we encourage people like today, Pastor was telling us to move forward in the corridors of power, to get to the higher excellence and all that. All those things are part of ministry. So personally, when we come to church, ministry is not just reading the Bible and praying. There could be medical doctors, there could be lawyers. In fact, we need lawyers because there are people there who will take our land. They will say that the church you know, must not even be there in the first place. We need all those people to come together, but under the umbrella that we are one. When Mm -hmm. we come to God, we know almost nothing but the Christ we are serving, period. Nobody lost over anybody. I have a function. I have a ministry I'm actually contributing, and I do it. The moment it crosses the line where, you know, the people who come to church and clean is revered more than the pastor, who preaches on Sunday, then there we can talk about the problem. But God in his own wisdom will allow leaders to function. Look at what he told Peter. Peter, I have strengthened you. In fact, Satan wanted to silt you as wheat. But I have strengthened you. And when you have been strengthened, go and strengthen the others. In that passage, we see the leadership role he places on Peter. But here he wasn't making reference to title. He was speaking of the work. And so we can talk and argue this back and forth, but I believe that everybody should be in his lane. If you are an elder of the church, don't lord it over people. If you also come to church and you clean, be very content that that is a ministry God has given you. And when we are under that umbrella of love, there wouldn't be differences amongst us. Thank you. Thank you. That was really great. Um, and I thought, let me ask you this then. So why do people actually use their title? What, why do they use their title to, like Elder is saying, to, like, to abuse? I mean, you have, and then when we say church, we are not talking about Church of Pentecost. We are talking about church in a whole. We have elders, the kids in other churches. But why do, what, what do you think that um, people use their title to abuse others? right? Like, let's say an elder, a, a doctor, right? I mean, I always say that um, you gain respect, you don't demand respect, but people mm-hmm. actually use their title to really demand respect, man. demand the way they are treated among other people. Why do you think they do that? Yeah, so I think, uh, first of all, thank you so much uh, for the question. Thanks for having me. So I think uh, I think a part of it is, I think it's a, it's, it's more of a cultural issue. Uh, from from where I stand, I do think that uh, predominantly um, African churches, or even outside of the context of church, um, just like a lot of Africans in general, um, when it comes to titles, uh, we're we're very particular about titles. We really really care about our titles. We we demand that people address us by our titles, and we uh, we expect people to acknowledge 
what those titles are, even while we're in church, right? So I I personally think that a part of it is a is a cultural thing, and it just so happens that um, when we come to church, uh, if if we we're Ghanaian before we came to church, when we come to church, we are still Ghanaian, and so whatever cultural um, nuances that we 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 have, those don't necessarily cease to exist once we're in church. And I think one of the manifestations of that it, it shows up. Um, in the way that we uh, regard titles. I think that um, as far as where that comes from, you know, even even though we we have addressed that as a cultural thing, I think that might, it, for some, not necessarily for everybody, for some, there might be, uh, maybe it's an insecurity thing. Maybe it's, you know, maybe like, uh, they're not necessarily getting any respect from anything else. So then uh, from this one area, they feel like, well, that's where I think like you were saying, Justina, that you know, people can get that respect, maybe they're not getting it from where they want to. So that could be a reason. But I think in general, within our culture, like we have a very high regard for um addressing people by um whatever title it is that they have. So whether it's a uh spiritual title like uh apostle, pastor, doctor, whether it's like an academic title, whether it's um uh if, if they're a doctor or their engineer. Or I actually didn't realize um, that even in Ghana, like uh, some people are addressed by engineer. This I, I never knew that was a thing <laughs> until recently. Wow. But yeah, in Ghana, yeah, really? so they will add the engineer to that. That's like, I think the, it's like ing or something. I, wow, I enjoy, Yep, it's it's a thing, right? And I um and I think the reason why I say it's a cultural thing is because like when we um when we interact with like other um, non-Africans or people that are not of African uh, origin. Because I think uh, uh, the, the title thing, I think among African-Americans too, like sometimes we see that manifesting. Um, for example, there's a doctor that I follow on IG and he's an African-American, he's pretty accomplished. So one time he made a post and he tagged a whole bunch of people that were also doctors. So I was paying attention to how all their IG names are or what they have in their IG bio. And I noticed that for every single one, it's either the there is an MD as a part of their name, or the the IG name like has like as maybe as doctor this or doctor that. And if they don't have the doctor in their name, if you go on their IG bio, it's gonna state that uh, the fact that they're a doctor and then where they work and everything. And I mean, naturally, there's nothing wrong with it. But then we see that. Um, like it's a big deal to us, right? And I mean, like the, there was some pride in there, you know, especially from you know the places that we come from, for God to, you know, allow us to be able to get so, to some uh, to certain levels in life. Like the, the like on on surface level, there should be nothing wrong with it. But I think sometimes, mm -hmm. Elder Richmond was saying, it gets to a level where people try to lord it over people. So having right. said, um, the well, you know when we look at other cultures, like especially. Um, like just like other Americans, we don't really see that as a thing. So I, uh, I've had the privilege of like interning at a company where um, there are almost six thousand employees on one site, and among the among all the employees, there are um, a lot of people that are like that have gotten their PhDs, and and yet when you address them, they don't necessarily go by their title. Mm. They all go like every single person goes by their first name. The first name. Every single person goes by their first. Like, I, I, and some people actually discourage you. Like one of my um, co mentors, um, she's a PhD, but I think in the beginning, like I would try to call her like by her title. She'd be like, oh, just call me, just call me my first name. And so, um, and like it's normal. It's not even like they're trying to be humble. It's just like a it's that's a just the nature thing. of their culture. So I think that. Yeah. Um, with the title thing is is very much a, a a cultural thing, and so when it becomes an issue, I think that's where we need to address it. Mm -hmm. But as for why, I think it, it it largely is is a cultural thing, and it's not even just for Africans. I think, like I had cited, even for um, some African Americans, we also see that that is a thing. So it looks like for a lot of Black people, like that's a that's a thing where we have an affinity for titles. And again, on surface level, there's nothing wrong with it. Because we've put in the work, we've been, you know, from where we come from, and you know, looking at where God has brought us, like it's it's a huge deal when uh, some of us have been able to uh, attain certain titles. But I think uh, whenever we uh, gather, as you know, whenever we gather in church or whenever we uh, um, gather as a people of God, like the that um, the title no shouldn't cause any separation, or it shouldn't right. cause 
any um, differential treatments mm -hmm. of right. people. So um, I think Dickness Linda was uh, telling me, so Dickness Linda is at, is at my assembly. And I think uh, last week, Sunday, when we uh, closed that church, we all stayed to like help clean like church. And she, she had mentioned that her boss um, at work, like uh, like basically like uh, like one of her main bosses at work, like he is the cleaner at his church. Like that is his thing. Right. So at work, he's a boss. But when he goes to church, he's the one that cleans. Right. So mm -hmm. it's like just having that understanding that, yeah, we acknowledge people and we we we, um, we respect people um, for um, for how they've been able to work hard and gain certain accreditations. But then uh, the fact like those titles should not be should not dictate um, or shouldn't warranty any kind of special treatment. We need to acknowledge. Right. Uh, we need to acknowledge all the different people that we have in our assemblies, like Elder Richmond was saying, but then also as um, Elder Solo was saying, also as Pasolo was saying, that that um, that shouldn't uh, lead to preferential treatment. It shouldn't lead to um, differential treatement as well. That's, yeah. That's what I think. Wow. No, I mean, I, I agree with you, Ford, 100% as you're, as you're talking, all of you, everything you said, I think is right on. And, and it kind of even, and I know we're just at the T, right? We're just at the, the, the title aspects of this, avoiding the traps, right? Because mm -hmm. it, it's almost like you've all have said in some form or shape or fashion, if you just to look at the concept of today's title and, uh, and avoiding these traps, the titles, the relationships and, and so forth, these are all mechanisms that the enemy is almost using essentially to trap us, to distract us from the, the true course and the true purpose and why God created us and why we're here. So I think it's a good point. I don't want to move on to the relationship, to the R. I think we have to beat this title down dead before we leave. And I think the last thing is with Aquisi's, um question, Great Minds. He just posted in the chat. Thank you for bringing your question in. But I know there's some of us, because me, myself speaking, I'm still in school. And the way I'm stressed, I have a paper due tonight. <laughs> so, like, you know, let's talk about this. Oh, the ritual, I know you can relate. <laughs> but some of us in school, that that's that, separating these two things, these two worlds, like Solomon has been has been saying. But to Akasi's point, I have worked for my title and earned it. Why can't I humbly ask to be addressed as such? I sweated for it. So why can I ask you humbly to say, please address me by this title? <laughs> which which when you when you hear it in your head, it's almost like, okay, why? You know, I'm like, why do I need to address you by that title? Does it like add more dollars into your bank account like immediately? Because for me, the titles is separated, right? I feel like you get the titles for your financial purposes, fine. But like to Solomon's point in church, you know, let, let's talk about that. Now, now what do you think, Deaconess Nana? Like Somebody's worked hard for it. They feel like they earned it. If they humbly ask you, please call me, you know, Deaconess, doctor, lawyer, engineer, Katia Champona. What's the problem? <laughs> well, I believe that's not a problem. Um, if you want to be addressed as a doctor, I mean, that is fine. But um, should I forget to address you as a doctor? That should not be a problem either. Oh, I like that. It doesn't take it away from you. So if you want to be addressed as um, maybe Dr. Mrs. Patty, you know, yeah. and it's not, sometimes it becomes like a tongue twister, <laughs> you know, we have to, we name. Like, okay, so if I omit the doctor, it shouldn't take it away from you because it's it not going to be, I mean, you, you're still going to be a doctor regardless. Oh, I love that. I love okay. that. Whether we call it you or not, Justina, mm -hmm. it does not take anything away from you. There's conversations that's going in my head. I, I think that really did it for the title, right? Whether we say it or not, it shouldn't yeah. matter. You should be focused on something greater and bigger, um, bigger purpose. So Diknazana, to stay with you for a second on relationship, let's move on to the R, right? On the relationship aspect. Why is this so easy, especially for us young people, a lot of our young adults watching out there are great minds. Why is it so easy for us to look to our families, our friendships, even our romantic you know, relationships that we have to fulfill every need to the extent that sometimes we um, lose our identity and become totally lost in these relationships. We look to these relationships for validation. We look to them for approval, for comfort. Why is it so easy for us to get wrapped up in people and like our relationships with people? 
Well, um, I believe it is easy because the other ones that we see, the other ones closest to us, we know that we receive everything from God, but they are the ones that are closest to us. And sometimes you feel like without them, you cannot make it without them because mm. you feel like you are being reliant on them. And uh, I've been in that position before. Um, I, I used to think, oh, uh, okay, this one knows God. So it's like, because I'm closer to him. So I, like, I'm kind of attached to so it. It's like, I'm closer, but God wants you to have a personal relationship with him. Mm. And because he is the one that we are not seeing the invincible God, you are, you are just like automatically going to be attached to something that you see. So, um, I believe that's what it is. And um, social media is not helping. <laughs> you right. know, Facebook is not helping. A lot of people are posting things out there, couple goals, relationship goals, <laughs> goals. So <laughs> you will tend to want to um, find um, maybe affirmation or something to the, to the closest people around you, or you'll be finding value yeah. or comparison. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I believe that's what it is, basically. I love that. Oh, Elder Ford, what do you think on that topic, especially on the relationship aspect? Because I literally took the words out of my mouth. Uh, yeah. And uh, just to add, uh, just to add to it, I think uh, as because I, I think so. The 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 main point that I was gonna make is the is that was the first thing that she said in that um, because they're the people that we see, and I think that is the foundation for everything. Like for every um aspect of relationships that can become a trap the main reason is because that's what's visible to us mm -hmm. um also they're, they're the same people that we've grown up with they're the same people that um well in re okay so I'm, I'm speaking i guess uh, in regards to uh relationships specifically um but then if, if we're speaking of like family relationships mm -hmm. then those are the people that we've kind of grown up with those are the people that you know have given us uh compliments from time to time and so it's something we've grown up with we get accustomed to uh uh hearing that but i think that you know uh as believers as we grow we get to understand that our identity ultimately comes from god um within the context of a relationship i think um based on that same foundation but i think it, it even gets uh compounded within the context of a relationship because um and i guess on on some level uh our goal is to please whoever our partner is and so um I think I was listening to um, I was listening to uh, um, a, I was listening to uh, Pastor Jerry Flowers, and um, he was um, he was talking about uh, he was talking about how people end up like withholding an aspect of themselves when they go from one relationship to another, and he mm -hmm. mentioned that sometimes it's because in a previous relationship your partner had told you uh something maybe they had said that you're too goofy or they had told you that you were a certain way so then when you go into the next relationship because of that thing you heard you don't realize that it's card you don't realize that it, it influenced you and so now you're holding back aspects of your, uh, of yourself um the way that god made you unique you 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 withhold that from the next person and then he made a point that until you um are your your true self until you are your complete full self you may not necessarily meet the person that you're supposed to meet because whenever they come into your life, they're not meeting the person they're supposed to meet. They're meeting a version of you that isn't true to who you are, right? And I think wow. that uh, just naturally within the context of a relationship, um, because an aspect or I guess a dimension of it, like if you really like the person, you're obviously trying to please them. You're trying to do the things that you know they would like. You're trying to present a version of yourself that they would appreciate. Also, you hope that they embrace every aspect of you. And so you hope that you would hear um, things that they would say that would affirm you or that will validate you. And that's why um, words of affirmation is uh, one of the main love languages that there, uh, uh, that there are. Um, and so I think that um, is that is why perhaps that comes because like those does need to um, please the person that we right. have, um, that, that we happen to have a relationship with. But then that, that's also a trap because it can trap us to not be our full selves and not be um, as unique as we are, because as we know, scripture says that we are um, fearfully and wonderfully made. Each and every one of us is unique. I think that when we look at the disciples, we we, we realize that each of them have had very different temperaments, but then uh, Jesus worked with all of it. And every one of their temperaments was necessary, excuse me, for what God had them do 
later on in ministry. And so um, our uniqueness is great. Our uniqueness is, is, is good. Just because somebody we're with within the context of a relationship does not appreciate it, it doesn't mean that it's bad. And so right. unless like, you know, it's 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 something that like it's on like uh um borders on sin. But if that's not what we're talking about, then our uniqueness is good and we need to embrace our uniqueness. Right. Okay. And I and on that, right, just a quick, just a quick follow-up. Because I think when I when I looked at this question, it was like, wow, people actually sometimes lose their identity for to your point with this trap. Solomon, if I can come over to you from what Ford was just saying losing our identity to the extent of losing our identity to the extent of some people literally killing themselves, right? When they lose their partners or being suicidal because of relationships, because of friendships that have broken or, or, you know, feeling isolated. Why is it so easy for us people, like as, as young people, especially to get trapped in that concept? Oh, Solomon, you're still muted. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's a good question. Uh, so to be to be trapped in this world is very easy, mm -hmm. um, especially when you're not uh, in the will of God, when you're off track. Um, relationships are good. You know, God actually created man or he created, you know, yeah, he created mankind to relate to each other. You know, he put whatever thing that I want in you in mm -hmm. so much that I have to really respect and honor that relationship for me to get out what I want. From you, right? You know, a, a woman cannot conceive by herself. She needs a seed from a man, right? So we can see that even from, from the structure of God, He created us so that we can relate. God created man so that man would depend on Him, right? That's why He mm -hmm. made us earthy. Earthy basically means you are basically on your own, you are deficient. But with God on your side, you are sufficient, right? So right. he made you weak. He made you, and it's not bad. He made you in such a way that you need eternal life, right? Mm -hmm. But the life can only come from through the relationship with him. Yeah, yeah. So that's how he also made us, you know. Uh, and I believe just like how we love the Lord our God with our heart, soul, and our mind. And the Bible also says the second is likened unto the first. Love your neighbor as yourself. So, which means you don't if you if you don't have faith in God, then it will be very right. difficult difficult for you to love your neighbor as yourself. So we tend to trap to be trapped in those situations when we, we first of all we don't have the first one, which is the love for the Lord your God with all your heart and your soul and your mind. If your relationship with God is not that strong, then obviously your relationship with your spouse and other people will, will, will be weak, right? Because that relationship is dependent on what you have with God. You know, the second is likened unto the first. So which means without the first, the second will not even exist. You know, and it, it, like talking about love, you know, if, if I'm not able to really receive the love from God, I will not be able to love my spouse or love my neighbor as myself. Right. So again, we have to prioritize that relationship with God, finding yourself in Christ, knowing that, your life is hid in him. If you're able to really nurture that relationship and grow that, then it will reflect in various relationships of your life. And there are some supernatural relationships that we also have to keep, you know, and many a times we are not mindful of those things. There are some divine relationships, people that come in your life that God has placed them in your life for, 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 for a specific reason. And many a times we are not able to discern that this relationship is, is really divine it's from god because this person is helping me to grow in this way or in that way or is connecting me to other people that will also help me so i believe we tend to be trapped when we don't value first our relationship with god when we don't take that serious when we don't depend and rely on him when we don't allow god to be our helper we tend mm -hmm. to do things on our own as a result of that when it doesn't go well you 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 want to kill yourself, you know. Mm -hmm. You want to do all sort of things because you first of all did not value the relationship that you you supposed right. to have with your heavenly Father. Mm. So, I'm I'm just thinking um, with this value, you know how um, sometimes like some individuals or family members can really be attached to their family to the point where they actually we are talking about traveling they actually lose themselves. Like 
they don't know who they are. Like they are so trapped in a sense that all that you know of them is because of their family, either their family names or the achievement of what their family or the achievement from their family. So how can, I'm, I'm just sitting here, think about it. How can someone in that situation, Solomon, and then I'll go to the Kristana, can someone be in that, how can one in that um, state know that they are trapped behind their family name or family identity for them to know, okay, it's time for me. Someone's talking about, I'm having a personal relationship with God. To be able to know, I need to work in my own identity that Christ has given me. Um, so, and then um, back to you, so, and then um, if the clients don't have anything else um, she can add to that, how can someone really know that I'm trapped behind my family name or my family frame and then get away from it and walk in the will and purpose of Christ instead of being trapped in that identity that we are talking about? So, basically, if... If, if I glory in my, in my last name, if I glory in my family name, then it means I'm walking in the flesh. Mm. Um, if I glory, that's why it, it goes back to the title. If I glory in my title, it means I'm walking in the flesh. You know, um, there was something that Paul said that really blessed me in Philippians chapter three, um, I believe verse three. And I, I want to read those verses because these are the things that we are we already um, having a discussion on. Paul said in verse 3, For we are the circumcision which worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus. See where Paul, Paul is rejoicing. His rejoice or his joy is in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. <clears throat> so it, it could be that my, my, my family, you know, they're rich. I'm from a good home, right? But I'm not rejoicing in that name. I'm rejoicing in Christ Jesus. That name has no value, even though it has no value to me when it comes to my spiritual life. I'm, I'm not despising the fact that it has been able to help me do things naturally. But when it comes to spiritual things, I don't, I count all those things as done. Now, if you look at what Paul said, he said he rejoiced in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. So now the question would be, what does it mean to have confidence in the flesh? Look at verse four. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, <laughs> If any other man thinketh that he has whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more circumcised the eighth, the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of Hebrews. So he's listing his resume. He's listing all the things that he has been able to accumulate in the, in, in the natural. And Hebrew of Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee con concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching righteousness, which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I count laws for Christ, yea, doubtless, I count all things but laws for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the laws of all things, and I do count them down, that I may win Christ. Mm -hmm. So if, if I glory in my family name, if yeah. I glory in my relationship with people, if I glory in my title, then it means that I'm not worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Yeah, it goes back to the title. If I want people to acknowledge me in, in, in the body, when we come together in that heavenly assembly, if I still want people to acknowledge me by my natural titles, it means that I'm glorying in the flesh. Mm -hmm. It means I have confidence in the flesh. You know, God right. is not against people getting those natural titles. He actually loves it. God loves working with intelligent people. If you look at someone like Paul, you know, look at the things that God was able to do with him because of his knowledge in the world or because of his knowledge in, in, in the Torah. And if, if you compare that to what the things that God was able to do through Peter, you can see the difference. If you look at how God was able to use Moses because he was really, he, he, he mastered the things, the signs of the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, he was able to do things or God was able to do more things through him than other people. So God is not against you getting all those titles, but don't glory in them. Glory when we them. come to that heavenly gathering, don't put your, don't, don't, don't even urge people to acknowledge you based on those titles. When you do that, you are glorying in the flesh and it, 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 it becomes a trap for you. Because first of all, as human as we are, 
you know, imagine being a doctor and someone, you know, uh, uh, talk down on you. That the, the devil can use that. The yeah. devil can use that as a tool to to you can start. Do you know the title that I have? Do you know what I've done? <laughs> and, and just just by you, you know, you know, dwelling in that physical title, that natural title can can be you know a trap, and it, it might you might not be able to walk in the spirit again. I I love people. You know, my my brother has a PhD. He, you know, his wife is a doctor. In my family, we have many people that have PhDs and all of that. You know, and but the thing is, when you relate with them, they don't even want you to relate with them based on their title because title. you put them on a the pedestal. And many a times, sometimes they will say things that does not match their title. That's where the confusion is. When we come into the body, and people have all those natural titles. But when it comes to the things of God, they are not up to that level. Mm -hmm. you, you, they are deceiving themselves. So all those natural titles, just like Paul, all the natural things that he, he had, God was able to use that natural things to build his church, mm -hmm. right? But if you have that title and we come to the body of Christ, and in that physical assembly, we've not be able to really manifest that title to build the church, then what's the point? What's the point? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. What's the point? Thank you so, thank you so much. So we have um, a comment from Moses Ashi. I don't know if I said it right. Thank you very much, wherever you are. He said that it is more honorable to be addressed with title or presumed to have such a title based on your delivery. To me, it has to do with the quality of content you are made of and what you are able to deliver. Christians came up in Antioch due to lifestyle of the disciples. Mm. Mm. I mean, just like Solo, Solo said, I mean, if you have this title and, uh, and then you come to the church and you're not using it, right, yeah. to, to really help build the church, like Nana said, and if I see you and I don't call you a doctor, it doesn't take away your, your degree and the hard work that you put in, right? Thank you so much, so that was really great. Nana, let me let me come back to you. This appearance, it looks like nowadays some people are taking this appearance as it's it's everything, is what you are worth, right? And has been and has been a trap for so many people in the society. So this question is for you, Nana. Through the influence of society, most people believe that appearance determines your worth. I mean, having all these Gucci, but I don't think now Gucci is even. As big as you <laughs> I'm, thinking, I'm sorry. Having all these, I mean, people flaunting their new cars and all that, it, it to them is is it makes them, I don't know if it makes them worthy or it they put all their worth in the, this all these materialistic things. But so how has that this become a trap and or an unhealthy perspective in our in our identity? Having all this, my appearance, I, I have all these accolades, I have all these materialistic things and has become really not healthy for many people. How has that been become, Nana? <laughs> well, it depends on how we see it. Um, right now, there are a lot of fake Gucci's out there, fake Louis Vuitton, <laughs> so hey, if that's what... <laughs> That's your forte. Go for it. Yeah. You can get you any knockoffs and be able to rock it and you'll be fine. But I mean, <laughs> to me, I really, um, yeah, I know it's a trap. But then again, um, that shouldn't define you. So, mm. You see, that shouldn't define you. That's the word. There are a lot of things out there that people basically did not even, they don't even own it. Mm, Some people can go to the malls. And try on stuff and just take pictures in the club, uh, in, in the um, fitting rooms, and be posting up in social. They might not even own it. So if you feel like you have to be rocking any of those things to feel good about yourself, then <laughs> so be it. But I don't really think that should define you. Any clean clothes, anything dressed modestly, anything. I mean, you should be fine with that because um, that really does not define us. And the Bible lets us know. And that's back with what um, Elder Solomon had. Um, what was his name again? Yeah, I was going to mention, um, you have to know what God says about you. Mm -hmm. It really, it, it really uh, falls back to that because he is our creator. He has said many, many things about us. I mean, in First Peter chapter 2, verses 9, he says, from the New Living Translation, it says, but you are not just like that, for you are a chosen people. Mm -hmm. You are a royal priest, mm -hmm. a holy nation, 
God's mm -hmm. own possession. Mm -hmm. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he has called you out of darkness to a marvelous light. You do not need the name brands to, the name brands to, you define, know, you. to define you. And if you don't have that, that's okay. There's always going to be time for that. You can rock the fake gold, the fake stuff, so you're not able to purchase it. There's always time for it. You will get there. If 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 that is what you, I mean, you 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 desire, but that should not be a problem for you. That should not make you go steal. That should not make you go kill yourself. That should not make you think that you are not valuable. You understand? So I love it, Justina. I I do have to jump in here for a second because yeah. Dignas, Dignas Nana has my head like on it because she said something right. She said she said that shouldn't matter, and then she also even made a point like that's not the time for it, right? <laughs> so it's like. It, 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 there's a, there's a time when you get to that point, you get to that point, good for you. Right. But if you're not at that point, I think the appearance of I'm killing myself, I'm yeah. selling myself to get the money, you know, to the point that some, some poor person's husband minding their business, that these sugar, sugar mama's hunting them down to get the money to keep up with this appearance. I, you know, I feel like that's really where the problem is, but I also want to ask Deacon as Nana, as we're on this topic with, with church, why do we have to always come dressed up in our Sunday's best? That appearance for me, I remember like a Sunday ago, I was like, I, I told my husband, I was like, Hey, let's just do a casual Sunday. And can we just put on some jeans? And I'm like, the fact that I even got to ask if we can put on some jeans just to go to church it's like why why is that appearance also so like choking where you feel like oh you got to have a suit on or you have to have like you know a certain type of dress yeah. on to come into the presence of god why can't it be that i'm coming presentable oh, right yeah. we're we're in this world let's not come like right out of our pajamas having brushed your teeth and you know things all over the place but like why can't it be more relaxed why do you think that appearance is so stringent also? And it's not just, you know, monetary and, you know, worth, but like, does that define our worth? How well, we come dressed to church? I don't believe that that defines our worth, but hey, we are royals. I <laughs> no mean, there's God. nothing wrong. There's one, nothing wrong with you putting on your regalia and coming to praise your maker. If you have it, so be it. So be it. If you have them, wear it and, I mean, honor God. I mean, for me, for instance, I don't go anywhere. So whatever that I have, that's my <laughs> chest. Okay. That is okay. my chance to dress up. I mean, hey, that's just me. But I'm just saying, God says, come as you are. Whatever that you have. Once it's modest. Once it's clean. Clean cut clothes. You can come. You don't have to be all dressed up with a suit or whatever. But if you choose to wear a suit, so be it. I mean, okay. um, we are coming to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He has done well for us. He has blessed us. So if you choose to come looking nice, that's good. Praise God. And if you don't have it yet, time will come. You will have it and you can yeah. wear it. But it should not just define you that, oh, because Sunday I have to be all dressed up, you know. Right. I want to show what I have or what. I mean, that, that shouldn't be the case. Exactly. Then, then that defines, then that means that if you don't have something, you, you wouldn't go to church. <laughs> you know, if you don't have something yeah. nice, you don't have the Gucci, you wouldn't go to church. Right. right. But if you wear it and come and praise your maker. I love that. I love that. I love that. It should not define you. If you haven't put it on, fine. But we don't want to get lost, guys. The the folk and I, and I wanted us to stay on appearance for a bit because it's a very hot topic and people get a little bit confused, right? Because if you have it and you're wearing it and it is not, it's like you're not killing yourself or you're not defining yourself or you're not losing your identity for it. it it's a very thin line. Elder Richmond. What do you think? I, I want to hear a male's perspective on this appearance, right? Because, you know, there's some females, like, we can't leave out of the house. I saw this picture the other day. This girl, you know, we have eyelashes on. And I'm like, where is her eyeballs? It's like, you can't. It's like, we feel like we have to have the lashes. We have to have this. We, yeah, we just have to be of a certain way to feel worthy and value. And I know a lot of people blame society. But it's not happening to everybody. So is it really society? Or is it something deeper within? All right. Um, so I agree with Nana, but let me read a scripture from First Peter chapter three, verse three to four. Do not let your adornment be mm -hmm. merely outward, mm -hmm. arranging the hair, mm -hmm. wearing gold, mm -hmm. or putting on fine linen. Mm -hmm. Rather, let it be the hidden person of the heart, mm -hmm. the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit which is very precious in the sight of God. 
So you want to do something that is precious in the sight of God. And you have to stop focusing on the outward appearance. Yes. Now there is a twist to this. And I'm using our church as an example. Again, I'm borrowing Elder Falls' um, assertion of culture. I've gone for Village Crusade, and if you don't dress in a particular way, you wouldn't have audience. Mm. And when you go to our setup, the way the Church of Pentecost started and all that, he, the, the church just went to the indigenous people. And sometimes yeah. when we go for Village Crusade, these are the people we minister to them. Yeah. If you're a lady and you even put on trouser, it puts you off. Nobody will come yeah. to your crusade ground and listen yeah. to you. That mm -hmm. is an exception. But when we come to a society like this, I think that we should all be free. So sure. far as it is modest. And here there is no meter to measure the modesty of your person. <laughs> but you have to allow sure. the spirit so, of God to yeah. lead you. Mm -hmm. yeah. and people, people sometimes ask me, working with the youth ministry, how, how short should it be? <laughs> you, know, the, the hair, <laughs> how, you see, if you want us to answer every bit of this question, we will shift attention. We wouldn't get time yeah. to pray. So Amen. I tell people, and when people come amongst us, let us stop looking at the way sometimes they are dressed, they are not yeah. in suit and all that. I'm telling you, Jesus Christ comes into our midst now in the form of a human being most of us will miss him True. because we expect him to be, you know, sometimes the weather is so hot <laughs> and you see people in suit and tie. Oh, and, and <laughs> I know maybe pastor is listening, but th that is one of the things I've struggled with, you know, always putting on tie and it has become a convention, especially in our church, True. but it shouldn't be the focus. Come to church. If you have a simple cotton dress, Come. And a shoe that is, you know, maybe on balance on one side, you are equally important than just like the person who is also in a designer way. God sees you, he values you, and you must be free. No pressure. Don't let somebody's makeup or, you know, hairstyle tempt you to doing this. Because today we are learning that you must do what is precious in the sight of God. And that is the hidden person within the heart. I don't want us to I don't want us to go back but at the uh, Frank um did well I'm just reading his comment on what Kwesi um um Kwesi said earlier and then I'll, I have a, a full up question on the appearance. He said that Kwesi appearance and she was oh Edda, that's my husband saying that's too long. Anyway great revelation Pastor what Paul said not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus is our Jesus took for me, took off hold of me. Amen. Thank you. So, Edda Richmond, let me let me get back to you. So, you are talking about um, you just mentioned about mentoring and all that kind of stuff, and come and then I was just saying, come just as you are. I mean, we, we have to dress modesty, right? And I mean, I'm talking about this generation. I've seen um, some young ones where you are dressing alone. Even me being a female, sometimes do put me off. And when you talk to them, they'll tell you, but God said, come just as you are. So I'm coming just as I am. So how can we really, how can we reach out to our young ones to let them know that you, yes, come just as you are, but your dressing should be modest. And we are talking about, and I'll tell you, is what goes in the heart. That is what is important. What is in my heart is, is more important than what I'm wearing. What advice will you give to the young ones to let them know that, yes, come just as you are, but doesn't mean that come to Christ half naked or, you know, with revealing clothes. Come just as you are, but dress modestly to, to glorify God. All right, yeah. So um, this is where it is very difficult to draw the lines, and especially mm. dealing with our youth of today. You know, when they ask you how short should it be and all that, and how long should it be, I think there should be some coaching and some relationship in love. Sometimes the way we even approach it makes it very difficult for people to accept these corrections. Mm. There is a way that you can teach young ladies and then the young guys who are fashionable in court. You know, they are exposed to all kinds of fashion, the way we should do things. But sometimes the preconceived mentality that makes us judge people based on how they are 
I have had classmates, you know, a lady I was trying to help far back in the university. And throughout her life, that is what she has been exposed to. That is what she knows. Mm. It takes a lot of effort. And of course, it is based in love and relationship before you can correct some of these things. So just like our former chairman said, you let them come in. When they come in, they will be conformed. You see, it's, the, it's a spiritual church. That is what we want to put across. The church is being run by God. He is the owner of the church. We are all stakeholders in there. But when mm -hmm. people come into the midst, and then there is love, acceptance, and there is proper relationship that is based on spirituality, I'm telling you, they will change over time. But sometimes the way we approach it and the way we jump into them, for instance, you see them in a tattoo or something so short. Sometimes even the demeanor and the aura we create around them makes them, you know, just go off. So I, I believe in procedures. I believe in time. We allow time and effort to nurture people. And we must be focused on the last part, relationship. And then when it becomes necessary, we correct because people right. have been raised and that is just what they know. They dress like that everywhere. But probably we are fortunate we had parents who will tell us how short and how long it should be. It's not everybody that is privileged to be like that. And let us mm. refer to Jesus Christ and then the woman who had committed adultery and how he handled the situation. Okay. And so I have a problem with the judgment and the way we jump into it, but we must tolerate those people. If it's becoming too much after you have, you know, found a nice way to talk about it and they are still not changing, then you, you can go a little bit hard. But all these things must be measured in love. And when love is the basis of correction, trust me, the correction is complete and it works. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. And and our sister Yago, thank you so much, Great Minds. Keep the comments coming. You guys are blowing up the comments field. We love it. Um, but Yago said exactly, dressing up to be in God's presence is not a sin. Amen to that. However, it all depends on your heart and the attitude towards attending church, right? Which is a good point, even to what Brother Solomon just said. If you're putting on that dress and you have a bad intent in your head, you have to check yourself, right? And I think that's the whole um, part of it too, where some people feel like I have to wear this tight thing or I have to wear this short dress to feel beautiful and to feel valued so that when I go, somebody will tell me something, which is all in what we're talking about today when it comes to these traps. Not only are you setting a trap for yourself, you're setting a trap for that poor elder who just wanted to pray today. You know what I mean? Like it's, we're, we're just making it hard for everybody. Let's move to the plans. We're going to get through these letters today, guys. If you're just joining Great Minds, stay tuned. We're talking about avoiding the traps. We've gone through all the, the titles, everything. Now we're going down into the plan. Um, so this question here, Elder Richmond, I want to come back to you and then pull in um, Deaconess Nana for a second. But you know, we talked about a little bit about this today. I think Carolina region, um, Charlotte district specifically, we had this today in church where we talk about plans and, and the different perspective um, that we have from what God has. So Elder Richmond, why do we tend to take matters into our own hands as if we have a better foresight and knowledge and strategy than God and that like, we got it. Like, I know where I'm going with the strength of God opposed <laughs> to letting God lead us. Why do you think we tend to take matters into our own hands when it comes to our plans for our life? Thank you very much. That is a very good question. I think as human beings, we are naturally responsive. Whenever there is an action, there is a natural tendency to react. So for instance, I have a two-year-old girl, and when she touches something that is hot, the natural man's response is that she will respond and take the hand off. It's something that comes natural. And so when you are a Christian and you are faced with situations and circumstances, mm -hmm. those natural proclivities in you begins to come to bear. You want to attempt it somehow. And this is where we want to sound this to Christians. You must yearn to go into maturity. And here maturity is your ability to say that I have my will, but there is somebody who is a supreme being and I will learn how to submit my will to him because he knows better. Mm. And this one doesn't come easy. It will take you time to do that. 
It is not easy to give up your will. Even Jesus Christ was struggling on the cross. But at some point in time, he says that not my will, but your will be done. Mm -hmm. And that is the level that we must all get to. When you are faced with an issue, know that the God who created you knows better. He knows the end from the beginning. And you must learn to submit all your will to him. In fact, when your will goes to him, it is purified. And it comes back to you to benefit your own life. So it is very, very difficult because it comes natural. We respond to issues and all that. And I just want to end with this scripture in Proverbs chapter 5, verse chapter 3, verse 5, that says that trust not or trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So your heart experience, your philosophies in life, which informs your wisdom, the way you do things must be embedded within the trust, the wisdom, and you submitting your will to God to make some decisions for you. And this one Amen. is something that we all want to attain. It's a level of maturity. Uh, you may not be there yet, but it is doable. Learning to submit the will to God. Amen. Amen. Dick what do you think on that one too as well? Oh, you are muted. Basically, I was thinking the same thing that um, what he just said. Yeah, we can, we just have to rely on God because when Jeremiah 29, um, 11 says that, for I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you. And it's God that who, he is our creator. Uh, and just as he said, he knows the end from the beginning. So he's already structured us. He already knows. He ha We are already a tested and approved product. Right. It's so whereby we 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 are stuck. We need to go back to our Creator, and know that okay, this is this is the, this is the plans that I want to do. But you have to submit your will to God, and trust that He will bring it to a, a, a perfection. And it is hard because <laughs> we are serving an invisible God. Sometimes you feel like okay, I can do it a, a quicker way. It's hard for you to wait. It's hard for us to pray and wait. Right. It's a waiting period. That is hard for Christians. And that's the, the, the main thing that we have to pray about. To be able to learn how to wait on God. To wait on God's time. But, uh, this generation right now, we are like the fast food generation. Mm. We want it mm. quick, 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 quick. Right? And we want it our way. They're going to answer me, then I'm just going to do mm -hmm. it my way. Yeah. If only we could wait on God, it will be glorious. Because in this time, he makes all things beautiful. Amen. We have to wait on God. We do have Amen. plans, but we have to submit it to God, and then He will prosper it. He will make it perfect, and then everyone will see that yes, God is in it. Is in God it. was truly in it because when God is not in it, we can see. Even unbelievers see it too. Right. Amen. Wow. Only if we wait on God. So we just want to end. We are about to end. We have only a few minutes. And it's always tough when we're about to end because that's when we the juices are actually coming out. But this question is for Ford and Ford, and then we'll get into it. Social media. Hmm. Oh, this thing called social media. <laughs> <laughs> social media has so many advantages. Trust me, we've learned so many things from it. I mean, I've learned how to make different dishes. I've learned so many things. But it has its advantages and disadvantages, right? So at a point, let me ask you this. Why is it so easy to portray a totally different identity on social media or, or a lot of people identify tied to the ups and downs of, downs of social media trends? Why is it so easy for us to portray different, like different person on social media? Yeah, because it's a virtual platform and... Uh... There's a lot of flexibility as to what you can post. I think that's maybe like a very, uh, like a simple reason why people are able to do that. So then we get into like the nuances or we get into like the, the motivation for people wanting to do so and exactly what kind of uh, personality or what kind of trait they're, they're, they're putting out there. So um, I think that's, you know, for some, it could be that, oh, they want to be seen in a very specific way. And so in order for them to be seen in a specific way, then they're going to post very specific type of content. 
And if they mm -hmm. post that specific type of content, then it, it creates an impression about them to people. And hopefully it's the, well, not necessarily, hope, but then uh, with the goal that it would uh, create the perception within people about how they want to be regarded. So if that's, um, if, if, if the sole reason is that you want people to see you in a certain way and that isn't necessarily who you are, then that obviously is not good because then it is a form of deception. And I think on the other hand, also, um, there are people that can uh, create a persona about them on social media for the sole reason that they want to be seen. They want people to like their stuff. They want people to comment on their stuff. They, um, they, they, and, and ultimately it boils down to validation. I think many years, uh, a couple of years back, that was a, one of the great mind topics that we did, uh, which was validation, right? So the, are there are certain people that will create a certain impression about them. And the sole reason is that they want that validation. And so I think that when the motivation is wrong um, or when, when people have um, an intent mm -hmm. that isn't necessarily rooted in them being their true selves, um, that's when they're able to portray a certain um, a certain aspects of themselves that uh, may not necessarily be true. And and so I think that uh, with that, it, 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 uh, the reason why it's easy is because of social media, like it's, it's not necessarily real life, but then um, with us as believers, we do have an opportunity to leverage our social media to cultivate very um, strategic relationships with the people that we are to minister to. And then as a result of that relationship, we're able to minister unto them with the word of God. And, you know, being able to display an example of what it means to, you know, be a Christian and um, and so on and so forth. And I think there are many people that have been able to leverage social media to do so. There are many uh, content creators that are Christian content creators that make content. And it's um, a lot of their their content is it's just a personality. Um, it's a personality um or the, the 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 type of content that makes just a personality thing or it might just be fashion but then it's it's great to see like christians in so many different lives so there are certain people that are using fashion as a way to evangelize the people there are people that are um just you know just talking about their day-to-day -day lives and what they do every single day there are people that are using that to also win so so there is that but then there are people that are taking social media and uh, uh, because they seek that validation, they will do whatever it takes mm -hmm. in order to get that validation. So initially we're talking about, um, you know, having like all the fancy uh, uh, um, stuff and having all like the designer wear. So people would literally do whatever it takes. If they got to borrow, they'll borrow clothes <laughs> from people and then wear and post just so it creates that impression that uh, I was uh, talking about earlier. So I think um, to, to, to the question directly, I think it's easy because again, on social media, like you can you can create any kind of impression that you want. But I think with us believers, um, we should have that innate responsibility that um, this is a platform that we've been given. And so, just as we steward any platform God gives us, we have to we have to view social media as a platform that God has given us. And so, we have to try to steward that platform really well. And so, um, that is something. Like I do know that. Um, with the validation thing, uh, for instance, that's probably the last thing I'll say. With the validation thing, um, there are like anytime somebody posts a picture or you know just makes a a, a, a social media post, particularly since um, we're we're talking about young adults, so primarily on um, Instagram, mm -hmm. uh, somebody will make a post and uh, will, will post it. Maybe their their Sunday's best, and there's nothing wrong with it. But then a lot of people will start to comment. And it's all going to be positive for the most part, right? So just seeing a lot of people, just especially the girls. When the girls post, man, you will see where all the other girls would come from. Oh, yeah. my gosh. <laughs> it looks and, so good. Oh, that's nice. Wow, such a baddie. And, I mean, it's great. You know, it's great to, you know, post something. You feel good about yourself. And then you you have all these nice comments pouring in. But then the, the trap in there is that, you cannot begin to chase that. You can't exactly. you know, begin mm -hmm. to chase. Um, chase some likes. People, mm -hmm. yeah, like people just validating you and saying that you look, you look beautiful and so on and so forth. But um, the goal is that we don't we, 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 we don't work to get that validation from social media, that we get that validation first from God 
right? We don't try to get it from our relationships like we were talking about earlier. We definitely don't try to get it from um, social media because some of the people you've never even met in real life and just because they're saying doesn't necessarily even mean it. So whatever it is, we need to get our validation first from God. Um, and then, you know, we can absolutely post like, um, because I think that like sometimes like the 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 posts within themselves or the the specific things that we're talking about, sometimes they're not bad, but then because of the motives behind a given post, for someone is very good, for another person is really bad because the motivation is wrong. And so uh, I, I, I pray that we'd all be able to uh, get our motivations right. You know, one of my friends, like sometimes, you know, he would post that like, you know, because of, you know, how God has blessed him. So like, you know, a lot of people like reach out to him, you know, just to kind of ask, you know, how he got to where he got to and so on and so forth. But then like right. sometimes before he posts, um, I'm, and I'm talking about Ovid, but sometimes before he would oh. post, like, he'd be like, bro, am I doing too much? Like by posting this, you know, because he's just kind of checking himself. Like he doesn't want to post just so it's like, like, like that gosh, yeah, yeah. He doesn't want it to come from like a pride thing, like, oh, and I'm blessed and I've done this, da, 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 da. right? Because like we're just trying to really just you know just be out there, you know, just show people that we're here and not necessarily like portray ourselves as better than the next person. So um we also need to just have people in our lives that yeah, you know we that. can just check with to make sure that like um we're doing things for the right motive that. The, the motive isn't enough. So sometimes like the actual thing isn't wrong, but then the motive behind it. And if it becomes something that we continually chase and we continually want to have, then I think there can be an issue there and then that would uh, potentially lead to a trap. So that is my spiel about social media. I love it. I love it. And Ford, you're getting comments like sent directly to my phone, but it actually has nothing to do with what you're saying. They're, they're oh. saying that they want to see you post your wedding <laughs> this year. Uh. So just, just know that the people are waiting for you. Um, so with that, with everything said, guys, great minds, we're coming down to the very end of the show. And we hate when we get to this part because we have to let you go. Um, but before we go, we want to move over to our brother Solomon for the very last question of the show. We walked our way all the way through the traps, right? We walked through all the different traps, the the, the titles, their appearances, the relationships, and, and the plans that we ourselves take into our hands instead of letting God lead. So our very last question today, Brother Solomon, if you can help us is, how can we rest our identity solely in the fact that we're God's children and are deeply loved by him? That's a good question. Um, I believe if you are trapped in any way um, in, in this life, go, go back to the basis. And, well, and what are the basis? If you look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, God said, let us make man to act in our image after our likeness, right? And when you act in the image and likeness of God, that's when you have authority over all the things that God created. So we know that God created man to be a king first, mm -hmm. then a priest, then a prophet. These three things are uh, 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 the basis, you know, so if you trap in your life, just go back to the basis. Let God put you back into the garden and let him help you to dress and keep it. And uh, we don't have time to go over all those stories in the Garden of Eden, but that has been presented to every man on earth. At some point in your life, God will take you from the ground and he will put you into his own garden and mm. he will tell you to dress and keep it. Many a times we get trapped because we are not dressing and keeping the garden of the Lord. Mm. We get into worldly affairs because we are not valuing the things of God. We are not seeking ye the kingdom of God first and not his righteousness. So if you are trapped in any way, shape, or form, go back to the basis. Mm. Talk to your heavenly father. God is able to forgive. He, 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 he has actually forgiven you. Many a times it's because of our ego that we think that the thing that I've done is too much for God to forgive me. You know, let go of your past. Go back to the basics. Spend time in prayer. Reflect on yourself. Look into the mirror. You are not looking into yourself. Your identity is, is, is hidden in Christ. The more you grow in the knowledge of God, you realize that you, 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 you realize that you'll be relieved in terms of your mind. Your mind, your mind will be renewed from certain things that you'll not be able to do anymore. The Bible says the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men. And it is that same grace that will teach you and I to forsake worldly lusts, to let go all, all those ungodly things, right? So let the grace of God teach you. 
Spend time in his presence. Read the word. Hear the word. You know, meditate on the word. Make sure that you, you build yourself in, in your most holy faith. Making sure that your minds are renewed every day. It's a daily thing. Spend time in the word. And I, I promise you, if you are able to spend at least an hour just hearing the word or reading the word, in the next one month, your life will turn around. You will not be moved by the things that is going on social media. You will not, because social media is another wall. You will not be moved by the things that people are saying and all those things, all those natural things, the material things, they are just, they come and go. If unbelievers are getting all those things without the spirit of God, why are you struggling? Exactly. You know, there, there are better things for us to focus on than trying to get, you know, this house, this car, do this or do that. You know, make sure you are dressing and keeping the garden. Because Amen. at the end, that's when God will ask us what we did with his gifts. Amen. Amen. I love that. Amen. I love that. And I love that you left us with that scripture, but seek ye first, right? The kingdom of God. Let's focus on his kingdom and everything you want, all the things you're chasing, these titles, these relationships, all these things, God will glorify in his own time and he will make it beautiful in the way in which it should be. Justina, this was a lot of fruit. I took a bunch with me today. God bless you, our great panel and panel, um, our great panelists for being with us today. Justina, I'm going to turn it over to you to wrap us up. God bless you. Yep. Seek ye the kingdom of God first. Avoid the trap. That was our topic for today. And I know, like Patty said, I've learned a lot. Thank you so much, our panelists. It was great. Traps. So in case you join us late, traps stand for titles, relationship, relationships, appearance, plans, or social media. And we touch on all of the letters and we've learned so much. Thank you so much, our panelists. Thank you to all our great miners at home, those who are able to send in their comments. And those who are not able to and you were thinking about it, please, the next time you think about it, make sure you put it in the comments so we can read it and share and also learn something from it. Thank you so much. So this month, today is the last Sunday of the month. Can you believe that? It feels like January always takes so long for it to end. And then by the time you realize it's June and December, and then we start all over again. So today is the last Sunday of the month, and we just want to thank God for how far he has brought us. We want to wish all the great miners at home, all the January bonds, wherever you are from 1st January. When is when is 31st of January? When is it? Tuesday. Um, I think it's Tuesday. Tuesday. Happy birthday to all our January bonds. Uh, Kofi, uh, no, is it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I was about all to the say, days of the I'm week. A, I was trying to say it, you know, give that, but anyway. Happy it's birthday, okay. God. We pray that God will bless you and all your heart desires will come to pass. And may his will for your life come to pass. Amen. So happy birthday to our great miners at home. And we just want to thank our great miners crew, the IT, the social media, all the crews. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you very much to everybody. So like always, don't miss next two weeks. is going to be a great show. Thank you, panelists. I can't say thank you enough. This, this Today was great. Today was great. Great show for the the last Sunday of the month. Thank you so much. Yes. And just, you, know, you forgot to thank me, but you're welcome. <laughs> thank me. Thank you very much. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> thank you, oh, Nana, and our rich one at our Ford Pass solo. One thank month. you so <laughs> much. <laughs> thank right, you thank so you. much. And as always, Grandma, come, let's reason together. See you in two Bye, guys. Bye. Great minds, great minds. Reason together. We are open to reality. Oh, we want no more. We are hungry for more. We are curious, always searching for the